In this question, we're shown the graph of a quadratic function f of x, y equals f of x. And we've got a related function y equals h of x. And the relationship between them is this, that h of x is f of x plus a plus b. And we're asked to write down the values of a and b. So presumably we can look at these two diagrams, these two graphs, and figure out what a and b is without much working out. However, to understand what's going on, uh, I think we're going to look at a simpler example to try and build up to how we understand how this question works. So let's look at this example where we're shown the graph of y equals x squared. And I'm going to add numbers to the x. I'm also going to add numbers on at the end here. So let's first of all add numbers to the x and see what effect it has on the graph. Let's add 1. Let's add 2. Add 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. You can see when I add positive numbers to x, it slid to the left. Let's go back to 0, and when I subtract numbers or add negative 1, add negative 2, add negative 3, the graph moves to the right. So if I'm subtracting values from x, it moves to the right. If I'm adding values to the x, it moves to the left. So that's the effect of adding numbers to x. Let's add numbers on at the end. If I add 1, it goes up one unit. 2, add 3, add 4, add 5. So the whole graph moves up parallel to the y-axis. If I subtract 1, subtract 2, subtract 3 at the end, then the whole graph moves down parallel to the y-axis. So for instance, I could move the graph 5 to the right by subtracting 5, and then move the graph up 3 by adding 3. And here's this exactly the same setup except I'm using function notation. I've defined the function f of x to be x squared. I'm going to add values to x and add numbers on at the end. So we've got f of x plus a plus b. This is the form that the question we're trying to answer is in. So again if I add values to x, the graph moves to the left. If I subtract values from x, it moves to the right. And similarly, if I add values on at the end, the graph moves up. If I subtract values at the end, the graph moves down. So if I want to move that graph again, five units to the right, I would subtract 5 from x. I then want to move it up 3. I'd add 3 at the end. And finally, here's an example that looks very similar to the example in the question. This time we don't know what the function is, but we're adding numbers to the x and we're adding numbers on at the end. So if I add positive values to the x, you can see the graph moves to the left. If I'm subtracting values from x, this is the a values, then it moves to the right. And similarly, if I add values at the end, the graph moves up. If I subtract values from it, b is now negative, then the graph goes down. So if I want to move this graph 5 units to the right, I would subtract 5. And if I wanted to move it up 3, I'd add 3. So A would have a value negative 5, and B would have a value of 3. And we can see the correspondence. This maximum point here corresponds to this maximum point here. But the graph shapes are identical. So hopefully now we're in a position to look at this question and say, well, OK, if this graph is related 
to this first graph in the following manner, f of x plus a plus b, we can look at this and say, OK, let's add numbers to the x. That would slide the graph to the left. That's not what's happening. The graph seems to be sliding to the right. If this maximum point started at 2, 3 and ended up at 7, 6, we've moved 5 units to the right. And you now know from these demonstrations that you saw that we'd have to subtract 5 from x. So for part a, x, sorry, a would be equal to minus 5. And this point moves up 3 units. Therefore, b is positive 3. So, original graph moves 5 units right to the right and up 3 units. So let's move on to part B of this question. We're told that the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx is equal to 4. Now interpreting that on this diagram, that would be the area enclosed between the x-axis and this curve y equals f of x between 1 and 3. And we're told the value of that is 4. We're sliding this graph 5 units to the right and 3 units up to fit onto this other, other graph. Let's have a look at what we're doing there. There's that area of 4. It sits around about there. We slide it 5 units to the right and then 4 units up, 3 units up, and it fits precisely on that area in the top of this diagram. And you'll notice that we have an extra... Let's just get rid of that. That area identical to the previous area 4. That was the integral from 1 to 3 f of x dx. And we've also got this extra area. It's a rectangle of width 2 and height well, remember, we moved this curve up three units. So that's got an area of six. So for part B, we can calculate the integral six to eight of h of x dx as the original area one to three under f of x plus a rectangle. It's a 2 by 3. So we've got an area of 4 plus a new area of 6, which gives us a value of 10 for the area between the x-axis and this curve, y equals h of x, between 6 and 8, which is what this integral asks us to find. And finally, therefore, let's come on to part C. We're told in part C that f dashed of 1 is equal to 6. Now, we interpret that as f dash being the gradient when x is 1. And we're told that the gradient at that point on the curve f of x is equal to 6. A tangent line to the curve has a gradient of 6. Now, these parabolas have symmetry. 
So there's a corresponding point, the point over at 3, where similarly a gradient that comes down here, a tangent to touch this point, 3, 0, that tangent will have gradient of negative 6. If this one has gradient 6, then this symmetrical one has a gradient of negative 6. And that's true up here too. Remember this whole diagram was shifted up. At this point, uh, 6, 3, a tangent line will have gradient 6. And at this point, 8, 3, the tangent line, symmetrical, remember, about this axis of the parabola, this will have a gradient of negative 6. Now in this question, we're told to find, or we're told that f dash 1 of equal to 6, the state the value of h dashed of 8. In other words, what's the gradient on this curve, y equals h of x, when x is equal to 8? Well, that's this downhill tangent line that has gradient negative 6. So we can say that the gradient on the curve y equals h of x when x is 8, that's at this point here, the gradient is negative 6. That tangent line, which is symmetrical to the one that has gradient 6 on the opposite side there, that gradient is negative 6.